This month in EnviroTube, we're looking at solitary bees. When people think bees, they think of the honey bee with the sting and all the stripes and everything. Now, a solitary bee doesn't live in a hive. It's basically a female lays an egg with some food. Now, when we talk about a solitary bee, mm -hmm. we have our bees that everyone understands, Apis, the honey bee. That's with the queen, the drones, the workers, the whole shebang. What's the difference between a solitary bee and what the uh, social bees uh, okay. are? Social bees are social. They live in a colony. They live in a family. They have a queen and, and they have thousands of workers. Um, and at different times of the year, they have drones, the males. The main thing about a really social, the you social bees, is the queen can't live on her own and the workers can't live on their own. Yes. So they have to have each other. Solitary bees are solitary. They just live on their own. They, so in spring, the female will emerge, she mates, and then she goes off, finds a nest, and then she'll collect pollen and nectar. Pollen is the protein source for the, for the babies and the nectar is the carbohydrate source. So she'll go and collect pollen and nectar, and then she'll go back to the nest. She'll take all of the pollen and, and regurgitate the nectar and turn it, make it into a patty. She'll lay an egg on top, and then she'll seal that little cell. And then she'll go out and do it again so and again. So a hole like this mm -hmm. that they've been occupying, how many eggs would be in it? How many cells? With the blue banded bees, they will actually burrow and make lots and lots of little cells. So this could be in the future, I wouldn't be at the moment, but in the future there could be hundreds of cells but in here. If the first one is at the end of the sort of tunnel, <laughs> how does the first one get out without disrupting all the others? Um, some of them uh, will have like branches, so they have a main tunnel and then there's branches oh, that wow. come off. So they've thought of this problem. Yes, <laughs> right. but apparently, um, I haven't actually seen it, but apparently the carpenter bee who will go into a, um, a grass tree spike oh, yes. and she drills down and she lays the first egg down the bottom and then keeps going and keeps going. This one will emerge, the first one got, uh, who got um, laid. laid first will emerge first and burrows up and actually dislodges all of the babies, all of the pupae yes. and they drop to, the, to wow. the bottom and then that's okay, then they scramble up later on when they're done. Oh. So, so they still survive? Apparently, yeah, yeah. Wow. I've not seen it, but that's apparently what So happens. if that's blue banded bee, yep. what's these ones? These have resin bees in them. There's, um, depending on the size of hole, these ones have only got an eight mil hole, but you can put lots of different holes and I'll show you some, an example Well, we later love on. blue banded bees. They fertilise tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Are resin bees just because we like bees or do they do something that's... They also pollinate. So oh. all bees are pollinators. But they're not buzz pollinators, are they? Um, not that we're aware. There's been very little research done on our Australian native bees. Um, there's a lot of undescribed species still. So, and as far as behaviour is concerned, there's very little done. On, on our on our resin bees especially and I'd actually really like to do some studies I need yes. some money. <laughs> well this is a fantastic habitat and I think like almost any garden in Australia could actually absolutely. set this up without a absolutely. problem. If you have a veggie garden this is just a logical thing to put sure next is. to your veggie garden. Yep. Not only is Megan an expert on solitary bees, but she's actually an expert in making solitary bee habitat. So through her I've been able to get 30 solitary bee habitats. Have a look. All these holes have been drilled, they go about this deep into the timber and they're all different sizes so they accommodate a whole range of different species. Not only are they oiled with linseed oil, but Megan has created this fantastic little roof. Fits on something like this to protect them from the elements.